I'd like to uh, give a little overview on our work on risk management. And uh, I already uh, teased a little the, the game theoretic aspect, so the, um, the mathematical basis from which we are starting and from which we wanted to start. Um, since I don't have uh, much time for a lengthy explanation of uh, game theory, I will spare that, just give maybe the highlights, just the hints on that. And uh, if someone's interested, then uh, we can, of course, uh, have a chat over lunch. It's always a, a perfect conversation topic for lunch. So it's um, what I want to talk today is uh, give you a little um, motivation. We already heard about the, the Ukrainian incident with the. Am I too loud? <laughs> Um, just motivate a little uh, why we are looking into this and um, how we are looking into this. Um, from a risk management perspective, we just uh, heard a little bit about the, the ISO 27005. Uh, we were approaching it from a little more generic level, so from the ISO 31000. I'll give a, uh, a short uh, remarks on that one and then come to the, to the HIRIM risk management process. Now, from a motivation point of view, um, we are uh, talking about utility providers, utility networks, and uh, everybody knows, of course, that risk assessment and risk management are core duties of the people running uh, a utility network, the, the people running um, a utility provider organization. Um, this is, of course, because they are critical infrastructures um, utility providers, as we've just heard, if they have a failure, if they have a problem, it does not affect the company itself, the organization itself, but it uh, can also affect the, the society, the people maybe living around the area, uh, the people um, depending on the service that the utility provider um, is providing. And uh, incidents may have a huge economic and societal impacts. Uh, we just heard the, the, the reference to the Ukrainian power grid, which is, I think, the, uh, one of the uh, more recent incidents. Um, but there are uh, several others which, uh, uh, which you might have heard of, like uh, in Italy in the early 2000s, where uh, there was a national-wide power outage and cost uh, costed a lot of money. Now, um, as I just uh, said in the in the Hiram introduction, uh, we are, of course, not the first ones to, to think about these problems. So they are, uh, they are out there. And the, one of the, the main problems that we see is that the risk uh, assessment, risk management methodologies out there, they are um, very well known. They are um, also very well established in terms of uh, um, standards. So when it comes, for example, to the uh, ISO 31000. Um, but they are often uh, focusing on one specific field, one specific area. For example, the ISO 27005 is uh, tailored more or less to the IT security. There are others like the ISO 28000, which is uh, um, focusing on the supply chain management. Um, there are uh, even more specific, like the ISO uh, 2858, which is focusing on the risk management in uh, the context of port security. So um, these standards, these approaches are often designed for a very specific field and they're always uh, or most of the time designed for businesses, for companies. And uh, they're not focusing on the special requirements of utility providers. So uh, companies are, they always have this big monetary thing in mind. So they want to make money where this is or this might not be the, the main incentive of a utility provider. And um, what I put down here is that the standards always uh, are based on a, on a matter of best practices. And um, yeah, so when, when looking at uh, utility networks, utility providers, then uh, as I just said in my introduction of the hiring project there, heavily in interconnected networks they are operating on. So uh, as a basis, we always have the utility network, which is uh, uh, the power lines, uh, the water supply network, all pipelines, and so on. 
So there you form uh, the basis. Ah, there it is. Okay. They form the basis, more or less. And uh, they have the intercon interconnections within their own field. And then above it, there are uh, SCADA networks, industrial control systems, which are used to operate these, uh, these nodes, uh, or several nodes, in the utility network. So you have the connections between the control layer and the utility layer. And then, of course, we have the ICT networks. Uh, we heard it also from uh, the speakers before. They take more and more part in these, uh, um, in these structures. So they're uh, themselves connected with the uh, control layer. Some of them may also be connected directly with the utility layer. So we have a lot of inter interconnections between them. Now, on the one hand, this is, of course, good because uh, the utility providers are able to monitor, to control their utility networks in a better way. But of course, this also gives uh, uh, an entry point for attackers to get from the ICT level over uh, the, the control layer, over the SCADA network, down to utility network, and create real physical damage while entering through a, um, a cyber door, more or less. So, when it comes to, to, to risk management, um, I will just uh, go very briefly over this because we, we heard a lot of, uh, about the ISO 27005 and the ISO 31000 is more or less the um, one layer above. So it's a, a very generic approach to, uh, to risk management. It's, um, it can be applied on different kind of organizations. It's not specific to uh, one, uh, one topic, one field. And that's why you can find it in uh, uh, several standards. Several standards are referring to this ISO, uh, ISO 31000 as um, the, 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 the baseline, more or less. It has a two-tier structure. So it's, uh, of course, driven by an operative risk management. But we also have an organizational risk management framework, which is uh, defined in there, um, which is also, of course, generic, but it uh, more or less introduces the concept that risk management is not um, only a thing that has to be done by uh, risk, managers, risk management managers, security officers, but also by uh, the CEOs and the people running the business. So they have to provide the money so that the other guys can work. Um, and now what we are trying to do, or what, what we did is we wanted to extend this very generic approach of the ISO 31000 to a more mathematically based level. And um, um, the, more or less in one sentence, the, the, the high rim uh, risk management approach is taking their general structure from the ISO 31000 and um, putting in several concepts, algorithms, methodologies to enhance uh, the generic process. So I put here uh, just the, the, the two-tier structure. So on the left side, um, you see the, the organizational aspects where you have uh, above all the mandate and command, um, commitment, I'm sorry, um, which is uh, giving more or less the, uh, this is the, the rectangle where the, the CEOs are addressed and uh, the, where, where you have to get the commitment from your uh, superiors, from the people providing the money to implement the process. And down there we have a, a more or less a plan, do, check, act um, kind of cycle. And uh, with uh, the do aspect, we have the uh, risk management approach. Uh, as you can see, these uh, five steps are very similar to the ISO 27005, uh, which we just saw earlier. So I'm uh, not going into detail what all these, these steps mean. Um, we just uh, heard about that, but I'm uh, going now to the uh, to our approach to the high rim risk management process. Um, as I said, the first thing is that uh, that came to our mind is that the requirements for utility providers they have changed. So first of all, um, in uh, back several years, 
the, the utility providers, they were very happy with their um, risk management approaches, dealing with, for example, the physical network, so just on how often does my uh, pump station fail and how, what are the things that I can do against it. And uh, with, uh, with the years, the, the number of cyber physical systems increased in this um, uh, in this area, uh, so that we are coming to this interrelated, interconnected network uh, that I just uh, had on the previous slide. And uh, the next thing is that threats are evolving more rapidly and becoming more complex. So uh, the adversaries always uh, get smarter. They are now starting advanced persistent threats, as for example we heard in the, uh, uh, which happened in the Ukrainian power grid, but also, for example, Stuxnet is a very prominent uh, example for that. Uh, and the intentional threats, they became uh, much more popular in uh, recent years. So this includes terrorism, but also hacktivists, espionage, and so on. So uh, the, the motivation of people is much higher uh, to hack and uh, get into um, a cyber system or a cyber physical system and uh, that's why there are much more uh, and um, much more complex attacks. Um, the uh, uh, the threats, as we just uh, heard earlier, they can propagate through the network, so they can go from one layer to another, and uh, they can affect very distant parts. Although they are just um, maybe attacked a, a very local, a very small part of the network. Um, these are things that we were uh, focusing on, so especially this propagation through the network and um, how uh, a malware infection can uh, uh, fail, uh, cause, for example, failure in the SCADA network, um, but also how security issues of the SCADA network may give access uh, to business data, which is handled in the ICT network. And uh, in this context, we were, uh, we were talking on the, of this hybrid risk management. So hybrid in our context uh, means or addresses this interrelation between uh, the risk, uh, between the, the, the networks and um, how we can address the, the, the threats propagating through these networks. Um, as I also said, we are focusing on the social engineering organizational factors, so bringing in uh, the human factor as a, uh, as a main part of the security strategy. Okay, now here we have the, the standard risk management process, and um, I just want to, to highlight a few uh, pieces where, uh, yeah, where uh, we uh, did some um, special work. So for example, in the risk identification uh, part, we uh, developed, or our colleagues from Lancaster developed a, a threat awareness architecture, so an increased, uh, uh, enhanced approach for a structured analysis of, uh, of threats based on an organizational technology and individual point of view. So kind of covering all uh, three aspects of this, um, of this approach. Then we have, for the risk analysis, we were looking at uh, two mathematically based, very specific uh, ways of assessing the consequences, especially when it comes to cascading effects. We were looking on uh, a percolation theory and the co-simulation approach, percolation theory, usually coming from uh, the medical field, talking about how infections spread among humans. We were looking at infections, malware infections of a network and how these uh, may spread. Co-simulation, a more, um, more down-to-earth approach, looking at the specific interplay between ICT and uh, uh, smart grid systems. And uh, we were using these approaches to, to get a, a structured estimation of the possible consequences of an infection of a malware, for example. Um, then we, were, we had to look at risk prioritization uh, because in our approaches that we were using here, we were not trying to aggregate data that we are finding from simulation or something else. Okay. Um, we were taking all this into account uh, using kind of a um, um, distribution um, a density function um, to get this uh, 
all this information into uh, the risk treatment approach where we are looking at uh, game theoretic risk minimization. So we are looking at the, an uh, optimization approach based on uh, game theoretic models, um, which would tell us what would be the optimal attack strategy for an adversary and what would be the optimal defensive strategy for me to act against this worst case scenario. Now, uh, for implementing this, we also uh, had an optimal execution strategy where we have an automated uh, uh, scheduling, automated scheduling of these defense strategies according to the optimal, um, optimal strategy. Um, for the monitoring part, we also have a resilience framework. I think Antonios, uh, my colleague from uh, Lancaster, will talk a little bit more about that so that I can come to the conclusion and stay within the 15 minutes. Um, what I wanted to, to, to say is that uh, we are um, focusing in, in our approach on qualitative data, qualitative information. So we are trying uh, to integrate uh, subjective opinions from experts into this uh, mathematical approach that we are having. We are uh, using these mathematical tools like percolation theory, the co-simulation approach, to get a more structured overview on what the consequences could be. And um, we have the game theory, this uh, framework that we, uh, that we were building for a, a basis for the implementation and uh, getting an optimal uh, strategy for the defensive actions um, to be on the safe side or be prepared for the worst case. Okay, so far, thank you. Questions, I think, later on.